Hi everyone, welcome to HFV. I will be back in Swedish capital Stockholm for a game at long last. Nine months ago, I was there for the Stockholm Derby. Link to that video below in the description box. Damn, it's been a long time. The home team that game was the same as it's going to be today, Jurgen CF, but the team they are facing are not AIK, but record champions Malmö FF. The last decade was pretty memorable in the Malmö's history. They won five league titles and had several Champions League appearances securing the economy of the club. They are seven points ahead of Jurgården with a game in hand and they won't have European games this season unlike their opponent today. Their last season was sort of a setback, finishing 7th after consecutive league titles, but their rebuilding is going seemingly well. They already have two massive signings this summer. 32-year-old centre-back Pontus Jansson returned to his parent club after spending 9 years abroad. He was captain of Premier League club Brentford most recently. 20-year-old midfielder Otto Rosengren joined Malmö from Miel before about 1.3 million euros, becoming the most expensive signing in Swedish football history domestically. I asked a friend what we need to know regarding this particular game and he mentioned the following events. In 2011 a game between the two was abandoned because of flares being thrown on the pitch and it's unclear who supporters threw them. In the 2018 cup final some Malmö supporters caused an interruption five minutes before the end when being 3-0 behind against Jurgården. And Jurgården won the league in 2019 by one single point on the last match day ahead of Malmö. We can say there's quite some ongoing rivalry between the two. In in terms of last 10 head-to-head, -head, Jurgården are much superior. That's all beforehand, see you in Stockholm's Arena. We are now near to the stadium at the gathering point of the Jurgården supporters. I'm going to ask them some questions. What made you a Jurgården supporter? I, I became a Jurgården supporter because my father is a Jurgården supporter as well and it runs in the family so you can't get out of it. What do you think about the season so far? Well I think we started not so good but we're coming now. It will be difficult to reach the goal but we hope to win a tough game today. Well, I see Allsvenskan, it's, uh, it's a tight uh, race for the top. It'll be even tighter in a couple of games and uh, it, it's exciting, yeah. Who can we expect to score goals today? Well, I think it's difficult speaking for our team, New Gordon, uh, but maybe Mange, Magnus Eriksson. The captain who played for Malmö as well. Well, we, we don't think about history, but we're happy you're here. We have to have the atmosphere. Thank you very much. At the arena. So. They didn't want team. We take him over and it's a great success. Score prediction and scorers? I say 2-2. Two, two. I think we win. I'm the more optimistic, so I say 2-1. Two, 2-0. Two, Paris and... Um, Danielsson scorers. Opinion about Malmö? It's like a derby, almost. Yeah, we're optimistic as well. Yeah. Is it like a growing rivalry, you feel, after uh, things happened in recent years? Well, uh, depending on the location, I'd, I wouldn't say so, but um, uh, it's, it's a big game, of course. Yeah, two big teams. Do you think you can have a run in the Conference League similar as last season? I mean, the last season was over all expectations. It was completely fantastic, a dream come true in all sorts of ways. And if we could do that again, it would be a yeah, living dream. I think we have a good uh, draw and we'll be able to qualify for the next round. I'm crossing my fingers. We can come as far as possible, perhaps to the playoffs at least. Tell the viewers where you're from and uh, how come you came to Stockholm? We're from Canvey Island um, in Essex. Uh, it's not far from London, uh, about sort of 30 kilometers. Um, always been a bucket list destination to go to Stockholm and see either Hammerby or one of the big clubs in Stockholm. Um, and yeah, Sally Jurgard's Malmo for me, it's it's a really big game. Like two of the top clubs in Sweden. Yeah, looking forward to it. I think it'll be a, be a good game of football. So uh, from obviously from a place called Canvey Island in uh, Essex near London. Um, obviously come to Stockholm. Uh, yeah, just tick off the city, watch some football, uh, and yeah, the football culture here, I think it's fantastic. So, to watch a team like your Garden in a big game against Malmo, it'll be something special. First time in Sweden, so yeah, love it here. It's uh, what I've experienced so far, it's, it's a beautiful country. Have you been to any other games? Yeah, we, we went to... Um, here which one, but yesterday. Yeah. Obviously, we went to Hammarby Kalmar yesterday. It was fun, it was lots of fun. Good game, football, atmosphere, 
it's not like what we have in England. It's uh, so much better. So yeah, we're hoping for the sort of same atmosphere today. Um, yeah, lots of uh, lots of fireworks hopefully. So yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Where do you see the difference between Swedish and English football culture? I think they they I would say they sing a lot more um, sort of throughout the whole game. Obviously, there's the pyrotechnics, the the tifos, but. I would say it's very similar. They're they're just as passionate as the English, maybe more passionate. Yeah. So um, obviously, the, I think the culture in terms of before the game like this. I mean, this place here uh, in England, we have places that we used to have. Uh, they're called uh, working man's clubs, and um, yeah, to see places like this thriving here is really good. But as you say, as my friend David said, at the game, you know, the fans are very passionate. Obviously, the choreography, the, the the pyrotechnic, and obviously, yeah. Uh, having this sort of ultras movement, which you see uh, a lot of in Europe now, um, it really brings uh, a lot of fun to football. Um, saying that sometimes you don't see a lot of in England now because of uh, the very strict security laws you have at games. What a great seat we have. Almost all the times I've been on the upper tier, but now we are here just next to Sofia Lektar and this should be a new feature, or at least I haven't seen it so far. All the titles of Jurgoran, there's the away section, there are quite many of them, but we're gonna have the perfect view on Sofia Lektar and we're in for a treat guys, I tell you now. Been talking quite much about Malmö transfers in the intro. Now this was a goodbye of Elias Andersson. He will depart Jurgen for Polish Lech Poznań. And what's his farewell now?
game is pretty much sold out and can you hear the atmosphere? You can see that there's quite much a growing rivalry. Also the pyro before the game shows you that. Also the whole display of both teams. There will be crazy atmosphere if either the team scores, especially if the home team, Jurgården, scores. We'll see about that, but they are quite attacking in the first minutes. What could work in Jurgården's favor today, as always, is the surface of the pitch. It's artificial surface and Malmö have natural. The booing is just crazy when Malmö have the ball. You can literally feel the hatred. It is 11th minute, Jurgo then take the lead. <laughs> Jurgo then were more aggressive in the first minute, stretched out the Malmö defense, moving it to the right side, and after the cross, a beautiful volley to get them the lead. This is literally Derby atmosphere. There is no additional time at all. It's half time. Jurgården with the lead. One nail. Could have been more even. It wasn't a first half with many shots on target. In fact, Malmö had much more on the ball, but they weren't effective enough. They had too few clear chances, especially too few to shoot on goal. They had one shot in total. Jurgården had five shots in total, two on target. I looked up the stats. <laughs> That's why I'm so clever. Jurgården were more aggressive and they just wanted more. And uh, the atmosphere is amazing, as I said, during the game. Let's see some more goals, maybe on both sides in the second half. Malmö supporters with the banner which says a maximum of 300 kilometers to uh, away games on weekdays. Second half on the way. That's a really big save by Tetter's room. Now if Mamo keep this up, they might score. Because obviously you need to shoot and that's what they didn't do so far.
This guy was in uh, Sunderland Till I Die. I remember watching it on Netflix. There's quite a lot going on in the second half. In terms of fouls, but not in terms of the game itself. This is what you call Limbs, club legend Radetinac makes the 2-0 for you Gordon in the 82nd minute after a brilliant solo action. He just cut inside from the left side of the box and shot it near the far post. 2-0 Jurgo Gordon, that's pretty much the game for them. Palenius, scorer of the first goal, comes off. starts again. After a convincing performance, two goals to nil at home, and Malmö stay third, I think, yes, Esborg are on top of the table. The other day he was thrown into a into a pool by your grand teammates.
Two nil for Jurgen today. I have some post-match interviews for you guys. What did you think of the game? I thought it was an amazing game, first of all. First half was a bit shaky, but then we really turned around in the second half. Yeah, I felt like it was an even game, but uh, in the end, Djurgården won by two goals, so it's a good day. Yeah. Out of the Djurgården home games have been, I experienced the best atmosphere today. What did you think? Was it better than usual? I think uh, because it was uh, sold out today, so I think yeah, it was a bit better than usual. But this is, I mean, it's not that out of the ordinary either. Why was it sold out? Malmö, a big rival, growing rivalry, 2011, 2018, 2019. <laughs> the, those, those years, do, do those years say anything to you? Uh, we don't really like uh, Malmö, so it feels extra good to buy tickets and go watch the game and uh, see uh, them get sad when they lose the game. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. You too. This vlog was really Jurgen focused with all the interviews and the atmosphere and there wasn't much to hear in the video from the Malmö support but that wasn't because they were bad, they were actually good but we were so close to Sofia Lektaran that they could be heard exclusively. I know there are quite a few Malmö supporters following the channel. I'm sorry guys that this video didn't have that much to offer for you because of my position on the stands. Both displays were really nice. There is no better side than all the pyros being lit. You could have narrowed the gap to four points to Malmö and the struggle of the record champions against Lorendana carries on with this defeat. I will be back in Sweden next month. If you enjoy the content, join me on the social media accounts you see on screen. Until then, check out the Sweden playlist for similar content Content, link below. I was HFB, thank you for all the interviews, see you in the next one. Hey though!